President Joseph Robinette Biden II um, talked about having a recent conversation with French President Francois Mitterrand, who died in uh, 1996. <laughs> and then he talked about having a recent conversation with German President or Chancellor uh, Helmut Kohl, who died in 2017. <laughs> Uh, then in the most uh, politically damaging non-prosecution memo since the good old days of uh, Hillary Clinton and James Comey, uh, Special Prosecutor Robert Herr uh, declared in a documents mishandling case uh, that Biden would be hard to convict in a courtroom. So he's not going to bring the case because he's, quote, uh, a sympathetic, well-meaning elderly man with a poor memory uh, that he, quote, did not remember when he was vice president. Uh, and that, quote, he did not remember even within several years when his son Bo died. And there's actually more uh, to that. All uh, this last bit about Bo got Biden so pissed that he held an angry, impromptu press conference at the White House where he shook his fist at clouds and confused each of Mexico uh, in perhaps <laughs> related news. Um a new ABC News Ipsos poll shows that uh, 86% of Americans think Biden is too old to be president. Is that a lot? Um, Nick. It's good uh, to my, see us pulling together on something. Nick, my question is, uh, what's wrong with the other 14%? And um, more seriously, how do you respond to the critique that you will see more and more of, of from mostly the media that this is all much ado about nothing, uh, especially when compared to the objective objectively awful daily uh, excretions from uh, Biden's chief competitor, Donald Trump. Yeah. Uh, one, I want to say I'm looking forward to a second Biden term where he tears a page from the mob boss Vinny the Chin Giganti and starts wandering around Washington in a bathrobe yeah. in order to you know scare people or, or uh, avoid uh, uh, federal trials and things like that. It's obviously a completely legitimate issue. Uh, Biden has, you know, is showing who knows if he has it, but he's showing clear signs of cognitive decline. If that's even, a, you know, if he has anything left to give on that count. Uh, so it's obviously an issue and it should be. It doesn't mean like being old doesn't mean you can't run a country. Conrad Adenauer, who was like a thousand years old when he oversaw the German miracle, uh, you know, was fine. He was competent and he actually did a lot of great things and helped, you know, create a stable post-war Europe. I remember seeing uh, on Turner Classic Movies years ago a, uh, a newsreel about Conrad Adenauer when he was chancellor of, of uh, West Germany and everything. And he was playing Bull or whatever the Germans call it, bocce or bull mat. And he could, it was like Mr. Burns on The Simpsons. He could only like drop the ball. And even then it didn't really <laughs> land. Um, but he's good. You know, um, Trump also has issues, right? He has mental issues and <laughs> impulse issues that need to be fully discussed. What do you think, like when you run to ancient people who are too old for the jobs that they're going for? Yes, it's a totally legitimate issue. And the attempt to kind of ban that or to shame people from talking about it is just partisan hackery and anxiety over Trump actually winning a second term which I don't think he's going to, but it's plausible. Um, but that's that's all that this is. And it should be brushed aside like that. And we should be talking about what are Biden's policies? Why is he so unpopular? Biden is as unpopular a president as Trump was. Uh, and if you go to like Ballotpedia or any place that stacks up approval and disapproval ratings at the same time in their presidency, you see something there. Uh, the big difference is that under Trump, at least up until COVID, which so the the poll numbers will start reflecting that if you do side by side, but um, about 10 percentage points more of Americans thought the country was going in the right direction under Trump, uh, if you can believe it, than Biden. Biden has real problems and the mental stuff isn't going to help and it can't be waved away. Peter, um, you live in D.C. Uh, surely Surely you've heard someone talk about a backup plan somewhere. Somebody has a backup plan than having a guy who talks to dead people. OK, so here is how it's going to work is first Taylor Swift is going to win the Super Bowl and <laughs> then happen? and then they and that's who has the backup plan. I want to be clear. It's they. That's the official name. They are going to install Michelle Obama onto the Democratic ticket. 
And that is the backup plan. That's and it's real. It's absolutely. If you just walk, I mean, if I, when I'm walking my dog in my neighborhood, <laughs> and when I'm taking him to the uh, taking my my little pup to the the dog park and hearing people talk about Twitter uh, at the dog park, which is yeah. a real thing that happens in my life, like they are all like, "Oh yeah, that's the plan. They have it." Are you kidding? There's no like, backup plan. No, like, seriously, there's yeah. no backup plan here. There is, there is no there, and in part, there's no backup plan because there's no real process for removing Biden from the ticket at this point, with the exception of Biden himself deciding to step down. Now, insiders, people who have influence, he has he has advisors. There are people who are high at high levels in the Democratic Party. They could go to him and say, we think you should step down. At the same time, that is a vote of no confidence in the person who is currently the leader of the party. It's a just politically difficult thing to do. Biden himself has said repeatedly, this is not like, this is not reporting from the inside of the White House. This is something that Biden has said and is very clear that he believes he is he is unique within the Democratic Party in his ability to beat Donald Trump. And so part of the issue here is that Biden believes he's special. He's the one who can, the only one who can beat Donald Trump and the one who must. And so I, I think it's it's very it's not impossible for me to imagine him stepping down. Anything could happen. But Biden believes that he has a unique duty to the country and to the party to stay in the race because he is the one who did beat Donald Trump and the one who therefore can beat Donald Trump and no one else can. And I think that that is going to that is going to result in a Biden Trump race. The horrible, terrible, no good Statler versus Waldorf two old men race that we have been worrying would happen here for the last couple of years. Emma, you're a you're a youth, uh, and uh, one of the peculiar things about the polling in this election is that the youths are who have been voting for Democrats by well in the excess of two thirds for a while now for president. Uh, the youths are kind of back in old Trumpy um, and are, are disassociating themselves, particularly with Biden's Israel policy. But beyond all that, since you are a youth. Uh, what's it like to see like these old men, the people who look like not your grandpa, but your great grandpa uh, out there running the country and running for president? Exhausting and a little disheartening, but also I, I think considering, I don't know, I'm 24, um, old, old men being the political <laughs> front runners has been the status quo for like as long as I've had sort of interesting political thoughts, which uh, is not that long. You're calling Hillary Clinton um, a man? That's what I, I mean. Okay, say. old yeah. people. <laughs> you're misgendering Apol her. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, and I think, you know, I was talking uh, with some friends about this over the weekend, and it really increasingly seems like our, our options are senile and senile, but also wants to be dictator for life. Um, and for me personally, you know, I prefer just senile, but it would be nice if if we had someone who was neither senile nor kind of wants to be president forever. Um, but, you know, the powers that be the sort of political momentum, it, it really just feels like Biden is staying the Democratic nominee, not because anybody really wants him to be, but because we're just kind of headed down this hill and it's just kind of the inertia leading us here. Um, and, you know, I, I don't know how a rematch is going to go, but I'm not very excited about it. Do we think of Trump as senile? I, I guess I think of him more as deranged. He's a maniac. Yeah, that's probably that's probably more accurate. That was a clip from the latest Reason Roundtable. If you want to see more clips, go here. If you want to see the whole episode, go here. Make sure to subscribe at Reason's YouTube channel or wherever you listen to podcasts. Thanks for listening, watching, or both.